Hello, my name is Bree Carranza. I'm a staff support engineer here at GitLab. Hey, my name is Manuel Grabowski, and I am also a staff support engineer here at GitLab. And uh, today we are meeting on Monday, March 25th of uh, 2024. Um, our promotions have become effective on uh, February 1st, actually, but um, the timeline has been a little tricky. And we've been meaning to record this for a while. Uh, the whole process is a little in the past already. I think we had to hand in our promotion documents on December 18th last year, if I remember correctly. That time, that, that specific date has changed a couple of times in the process. It was all a lot. Um, yeah, so we've been meaning to talk about that process because it has been an interesting, challenging, painful, many, many adjectives process. <laughs> um, we've certainly learned a couple of things and um, we generally enjoy reflecting about that kind of stuff and do sometimes get feedback that that is helpful to others. That's why we're recording it. Um, we wanted to record it a little bit earlier, but we've been busy, as you can uh, imagine. So now we're finally here. And, uh, well, Brie, you are usually the slightly more organized person. So I'm assuming you have, like, kind of an agenda? Yeah, so I have no... So I have questions that I think are useful to reflect on. I started right. collecting them early on because I realized no matter what happens, we'll want to reflect and consider what would we have done differently? What advice mm -hmm. would we give to other people? I also just have a few quick notes that I've taken in the weeks since the promotion became official because mm -hmm. like you said, time slips away and we've already started doing the thing. So it's been right. interesting to see what that has looked like already. Yeah. Let me add a quick clarification already because I just realized I didn't really explain what that means. Like our promotions have become effective February 1st. We didn't know on February 1st. <laughs> we were only told later. Um, but if it was successful, then it would be retroactive. Um, so that's what, what that meant. Yeah. And as you said, like during during that process, there was so many instances where we both said, oh, wow, we'll have to reflect on that. We'll have to talk about it afterwards, share our learnings, feelings, experience. Um, and I never really took any notes. It was just after a while, it was mm, enough occurrences like that, that I felt like, okay, whenever we finally sit down and record a conversation like this, once we get started, we'll never run out of things to talk about. Um, but I do appreciate that you're a little better prepared than I am. So one thing that comes to mind that isn't in my list of notes, but I think we felt fairly strongly at the time, was there were lots of things that were important to us, things that we did, that didn't make it onto the promotion document. Yes. And... Yeah. I guess two points and then I'll like open it to you. One that was really painful because there were things that were important and I put on the document, but then later as I'm going through, I'm like, yeah, I know it doesn't make sense to include this. A lot of those things were things that only spoke to part of the support team. I'm thinking in particular things that were unique to our SGG. They were very mm -hmm. important things, but staff support engineers thinking a little bit more broadly in terms of impact so they didn't make sense to include and that was painful and i wanted to say something about it <laughs> yeah it's it's not fun when you have to realize that the things that you care most deeply about and you think are your best work or most important to you are not necessarily the things that fit the role description or are very marketable, I'll, I'll say. I don't like that word, but um, honestly, I feel like one of the things I've learned going through my career development is that the higher you go, the more important that becomes, like how you sell your work as well. And that to me as a very, I don't know, technical, I'm, I 
very much see myself as an engineer. Um, and I think a lot of engineers really don't like that part. <laughs> I'm doing excellent engineering work. Isn't that enough, right? Like I felt that so often. Why, why can't I just be excellent and then be seen? And that should be enough. And I still feel that, I don't know, in a perfect world, maybe that's how it should work, but that's not how it works. You need to be able to speak about your work, explain why your work is important yourself. Like you can't rely and you shouldn't rely on your manager or your reporting chain. Um, and and I, I don't mean that in an accusatory way, like, oh, managers sucked. I don't see what, no, 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 really not. My manager in, in particular is super aware of what I'm doing and encouraging, but not of everything and not of all the details. And it is in the end part of my job again, as I climb higher and higher, especially to, to also know for myself why the things I'm doing are important, right? That that's kind of the, the flip side of it because your, your time becomes so much more valuable. You need to be very aware of how and where you spend it. And I think part of the pain <laughs> that you mentioned comes from realizing that, ah, uh, I guess that thing that I really like actually is not necessarily the best use of my time anymore. <laughs> that kind of sucks to realize. Um, but yeah, I, I agree. Like um, writing the promotion document and having to trim it down and realizing like, wow, like I'm not even with a single word going to mention this big thing that's not fun for me uh, the the specific example would be my involvement in recruiting and hiring which if you know me i am very involved in that i spend a lot of time on that and i like it and i think i'm fairly good at it and have a good impact and influence not a single word in the promotion document. I think I was like in, in some quarter, the person with like the most technical interviews, like it's a significant amount of time, not relevant to that promotion. It's painful. I really like where you got to on reflecting on those activities when you realize they don't belong in the promotion document. It's actually like an early exercise for once you get the promotion how am I spending my time now that was a question I had is okay I have the promotion there's a small amount of now what do I do hmm. part of the answer is do what you've been doing because that's how you kind of got here you actually kind right. of know until things become more clear and that's part of why the timeline for us recording this is helpful we're still in that it's new phase Right. But part of what guides you is, yeah, if it didn't show up in the promotion document, is it worth doing? Hiring is an interesting example. It's different when I was th from what I was thinking of, because that's something that you'd very much still have to consider. There are things that you do that take up a lot of time that are worth doing that also don't make sense in the promotion document. Yeah. And I mean, it also gives you um, an idea because we, we always iterate on what is the expectations of our roles, right? Yeah. So maybe one one thing is for me to say, well, okay, now that we look at expectations and and like performance criteria for staff, is hiring in there? <laughs> if not, should it be? Um, yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, another thing that came up for, I think came up a lot during the promotion process was the staff engineer's path. And I know you and I look at that book very differently. Um, when I was thinking about the question, like things I would recommend to other people, things I'm glad I did, I very firmly put read the staff engineer's path on my list of things I would recommend. With your feedback and your thoughts like on it in mind, what I would, I would keep that advice, but I would sort of say, it's not necessarily worth reading because it's going to be groundbreaking. It's worth reading because I think it is good to have heard the things in it again recently. And mm -hmm. I think it's good because I think oh, the book looms so long. <laughs> the book looms. Party. I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
the book looms so large in like these conversations that having yeah. it's almost like the summer reading book club thing where having read it permits you to participate oh, yeah. in these conversations and so yeah as you're thinking yeah i mean change. let me briefly summarize for for context um my view of that book or my experience with that book was mainly well duh um when reading it like it mostly seemed extremely obvious to me but as i said um and and as you just summarized yeah that doesn't change that it's true and mostly pretty good advice i would say and having it a like grouped together and summarized in that way is helpful and also it's it's validating right um because i can i honestly i cannot really tell you why all that is so obvious to me <laughs> i guess i have natural leadership skills or something like that. i don't know um i i always keep referring back to my time at university where i was in the student government where i learned so much about like organizing volunteers and very motivated people but, 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 but i don't want to go super deep into that but i think most of of what i naturally do is what i learned there um and not necessarily everyone comes with a background like that and with that experience so it might be new and groundbreaking to you and that's awesome but um even if it's not it's still helpful and as you said um i think <laughs> despite me kind of feeling less enthusiastic about the book than you i still was at more book club meetings than you because those were so awesome i went to both the time time zone versions that made sense for me i think you mainly stuck to the to the americas one you know i'll tell you something so that's an interesting observation okay. i've blown it <laughs> i will say i also had book club conversations about that book outside of gitlab oh yeah 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 i know it, it and and that's that's <laughs> the thing it just reading that book, knowing that book, being aware of that book is a networking tool. Oh, yeah. God, I said the other terrible word that no engineer wants to hear. <laughs> but it's, it's just a right. term for something that we all do at, at, like, at a certain level. You just do that stuff. Like, we talk. That is networking. You Like, it's a summarizing word. I, ugh, I cringe at the cliched networking idea but of, of course I do network all the time yeah I, you know I think it has a bad I think if we push past that cringiness of it there's a lot there one of the things I got from staff engineers path was the Rand's leadership thing mm. and the donut chats there calling them donut chats look it's networking that's all it is yeah. But it was called a donut chat. And so it <laughs> felt less weird. Yeah. And I will yeah. tell you, I took notes after every single one of those conversations. I got at least one solid piece of that's a really good bit of advice. It's again, it's not groundbreaking, but it's framed differently. And so I reflect on it. It's on my mind. Mm. I met cool people, like it's worthwhile. It's not the worst thing if you just push past the, what we call it maybe we should just call yeah. it donutting or something <laughs> donutting yeah i think people would like that um i i didn't quite finish my earlier thought though um when i when i said like where did i get my natural leadership skills um and how the book was helpful mm -hmm. for for me with that background um I never read a book before, right? Like I just came to some conclusions based on my experiences and seeing what works as a leader and what doesn't and stuff. Um, and so seeing someone very, very separated from that, like I think they were engineered at Google or some Something big like company that. and basically, of course, in different words, different structure reached many of the same conclusions that is very validating right like me with this self-learned background seeing it so yeah it was it was still valuable um and then of course as you said like internally and externally being a great 
not necessarily icebreaker in a traditional sense, but but in a metaphorical sense, right? Like, have you read the book? Yeah. But I do think it's interesting how you spoke about networking because, yes, what you described was much more classical networking, I think, what many people would understand under that term. I did none of that. I didn't get much out of friends mm, um, because I really don't like it very much. Um, the, 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 the cringe networking, if you want to call gotcha. it that. Right? Um, gotcha. Instead, though, I, I'll so so my case for networking, like if if you are like me and also think yes, oh my god, I hate networking too. That's that's my guy. Um, you are also networking all the time. Um, I do it a lot internally on mm -hmm. Slack mm -hmm. here, and not not just Slack, but so many connections throughout the company and talking to people and being aware of people, seeing people, knowing what people do, and all that was greatly elevated by the book slash book club. Um, so I also did a ton of networking because of that, just a different kind. And I find that interesting though, because that is, I think very close to what the staff level is all about in, in part, or at least what enables you to work at the staff level is having these connections and, and uh, knowing people, knowing what is being worked on all that stuff. And that again, kind of, it it just reinforces my point. Like that comes naturally to me. I I did that before the book, as well. But the book enabled more of it, and maybe slightly different ways. Um, and so that's it lines up very nicely with with me kind of feeling like yeah, well, I am already on that path. Well, duh, right? Yeah, I already did it, and I continued doing it through with thanks to the book i will take this moment to note i don't know how obvious this is but the staff engineers path book club that like the version we participated in began in january 2023 we created our promotion documents may of 2023 which was around the time it ended maybe slightly yeah. i don't remember if it was like a bit after i think a bit after it ended yeah I, looking back, the promotion of staff was definitely on my mind. That's why I joined the book club. Yeah. And I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, because as we've kind of discussed, there was this common truth to what was in that book club and the lessons you've learned, because that was all sort of common, it reinforced, oh yeah, this is the path that I think I'm on. Right. There's no reason to wait here. I'll right. just go so ahead and do the thing. I'm not missing something. You also, when reading the book, had had this. Oh, well, I'm, I'm kind of doing that already, at least partly. Like, right? Like that. That's not just my experience. You didn't feel quite as uh, about it as as me, but it's not like you had like the complete opposite like oh my god this is that makes so much sense i need to start doing this no like it also just validated the path you had already been on yeah i think you're right and i think the the responses we had to the books are i think is really a personality thing yeah. i that's just how i tend to receive that kind yeah, of material yeah. oh, of yeah. course i felt yes. that way about it yeah that that makes perfect sense i i will um maybe let me try asking you a question what because I'm sure that must have been before the book, or actually I know that was before the book and the book club. What made you decide to go for staff? <laughs> That's an I amazing question. I can give you a little more context why I'm asking this. Sure. Because let me let me answer. Okay. I have a very simple answer that, of course, is more nuanced if I would use more words, but the very brief answer is you. <laughs> Thank you. I think, so it's sort of twofold. For me, it is other people. For me, it is in part other people. When I joined the team, people like Cynthia and Will were staff or on the way to staff. And I looked at what that role 
gives gave them or gives one the ability to do to help the team. To me, it's all about maximizing the impact I can make on the team for the value for the effort I put in. And that's actually mm-hmm. one of the notes I took from the book most strongly is like influence at scale. Part of what motivated me going to senior is like, I hate solving things one ticket at a time. Let's, I get it. We have the individual tickets are important, but if we can look at why we're having that ticket and solve it 10 tickets at a time with a docs update. Yeah, I mean, I think that goes without saying uh-huh. we don't like literally hate working on singular tickets, or at least I don't. <laughs> Actually, in fact, I very much love it. Um, so I do want to have the time I need to work on the tickets where that's the only way forward, right? And yes. so to allow for that, we need to eliminate everything we can where that is actually not what we should or sh- should have to do, where it can be more efficient differently. That makes sense. I think an important lesson I've learned just along the way on this kind of thing is saying yes to the right thing. Yeah. 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 And that, that cliched uh, thing, like uh, if you say yes to everything, you're also saying no to a lot of things because then you, right. You can't say yes to everything. Every yes is also a no to something else, but it's an implicit no, not an explicit no. So yes, that's part of it. It's also if I, Yes, that's part of it. I'll extend and maybe this is saying the same thing in a different way. But if I think about the team as a whole and what challenges the team are faced with, we have a bunch of tickets coming in. There's ticket A and ticket B. I could take ticket A or ticket B. But when I think about what's more painful for the team, what will take me longer prioritizing for okay b is obviously the right ticket for me to take a is the right ticket for someone else to take i'm oversimplifying it by making it two tickets but do you does that make sense or should i say more words that makes sense that makes sense um let let me say a few words i want to i want to step back we are fairly deep in the weeds now yeah I want to take a step back again to why did we even go for staff? Mm -hmm. It does connect to what you said um, in in the sense that what we are working on influences that. If I look at myself, I would would describe it the other way around from, from how what you said made it sound. I'm not sure if it actually is the other way around for you. I don't think so. Um, So for me, it is the stuff that I'm working on, that I am always drawn to, that I will always find interesting, always find myself working another hour (laughs) a day because it just, it's, there is no super, like I'm not sitting down for five minutes and thinking, hmm, what should I focus on? No, I work and I see things, and I do the things that matter. And that is just like a natural thing here. And those things are apparently senior level, staff level things. Yeah. And so because that is just what I end up working on, what I should go for staff, I guess, right? That That's kind of the way I look at it. It's not that I ever, as a senior, thought, you know what, I need to work or I want to work on bigger picture things. I am limited by my current role. What Mm -hmm. can I do? Mm -hmm. No, that's that's just not what happens. I did get a bit of an impulse like that from you, which is why I said my very brief answer is you. Um, And I was shortly after my senior promotion, I, I think I got promoted to see you one cycle after you or oh, maybe it was still two because we still had quarterly i'm not quite sure but when that had happened and we had our next pairing um 
fairly early after that, you started, or in, in one of our pairings, you talked about staff and kind of probably mentioned it as something that was on your horizon, not yet like a particular specific goal you were already working to, but you knew you would be working towards that at some point. I didn't know that until you had mentioned it. <laughs> um, and for context, when I joined GitLab two and a half-ish years ago, I had not heard of the staff level before. That is, mm -hmm. I think that is very much a, like, Silicon Valley, well, it, it, it by now has spread much farther, but you do have to to um, take into account I'm coming here from like German small business. Well, mm. I wasn't aware of that. Um, I, then when we had that pairing after I was promoted to senior, of course, I was well aware of it. But at the same time, I, I think I, I had a coffee chat with Will fairly early on when he was staff. You think he could tell me what that means? No, of course he couldn't. Just like I now couldn't really. <laughs> I, I I probably can better now because support has had a bit more time to start defining it. But it is this thing that not even everyone in the industry will will actually know the concept within between companies it will differ very much what it actually means and all that and so i just got promoted to senior and was like that's good that feels good now i <laughs> what i'm working on on matches my title that's great and then you come along and say oh yeah and uh, so now let's go for staff haha <laughs> i'm like uh hmm chill <laughs> and like you weren't pushy or anything um but i was i, I was set to be content for a couple of years now as senior and by by mentioning it you you planted that seed in my in my mind though and and as i just said like i keep working on that stuff and so after a while i started realizing oh yeah no actually she's right like that feels like more than senior level and also um different from what i see other seniors do so apparently there is a difference in what i'm working on and, and how i choose my focus points and everything yeah and the, you know what's so interesting about this is that then later in the process i became much more pushy about it at least that's how it felt at times maybe maybe you can share your perspective on that Sure. So uh, it was a lot. Part of why I framed when the book club started to now is it was a long process from when I really started thinking about it seriously, which was probably January 2023 and now. Which for, for very brief for context, yep. which is around that time that I just mentioned after my senior promotion, right? Correct. November 2022 was my senior promotion. So that I was I was very early to join the staff book club, one could say. It was just a couple of months after my promotion. Gotcha. And I would probably not have joined if it hadn't been for you. So gotcha. that also ties into that. So that's an so that's another point. Um I'll skip my other point because I partly forget it. Doing the decision to seriously work towards the promotion was a big thing. The journey was a lot. I, <laughs> in, a, in a way, I feel like I became a staff software engineer during that process because it was like a year and a half Everything I did, I had in the back of my mind, everything I was learning and reading and thinking about being a staff support engineer. So it's like, okay, this thing, is this the right use of my time? And also, hey, how can I zoom out and think more big picture on this? As that was all happening, I was getting opportunities to work on bigger picture things that let me practice. I don't want to say practice what I was learning, but put all of that theory and stuff into practice and not being alone while doing that. 
made it really easy on all of those days when I was like, this is really hard and really annoying. I don't know if I feel like doing this. Mm. It made it easier to, okay, it's just a bad day. It's fine. Let's keep doing it. So thank you. You're welcome. Likewise. Um, yeah, I think I think that not being alone on it part uh, can hardly be overstated. Um, I'm not sure how visible that was to to the outside, but we really worked very closely on our promotions, right? Yes, I have a note on how visible it is. Okay. We I will commend us for the pairing issues. We yeah. actually did a very good job of keeping track. We're having a same level. We're going to be talking about promo docs. Maybe this element of promo docs. You can actually kind of reconstruct mm. that just from that project. Yeah. Yeah, that I mean that that's true. It's certainly it was certainly very transparent. Um I guess I was more wondering, I, I don't think people pay that close attention. If you looked, it was very visible, but I don't think many people looked. I mean, our, our promo docs were public the entire time we worked on them um, for anyone to see. Um, but I, I so one thing you, you mentioned, like um, it being such a long process mm -hmm. and obviously during that entire process you start looking at everything through that lens right does that make sense um and and all that of course also <laughs> you start questioning everything um i'm not sure if that is necessarily imposter syndrome which gets used maybe almost a little inflationary these days for like any type of insecurity um but that is that I think is the main thing where I would say not being alone with it is helpful. Because if I imagine I had worked on it alone, and I mean I can compare it to my senior promotion, which I did mainly work on alone. Um so many things are so much harder because you have basically have to convince yourself that you are valid um to to put it very generically whereas when you do it together the other person it, at least for me it is much easier to tell someone else when they are doing good work or that something is a correct statement not hyperbole and and all that stuff mm. and I mean, we're we are very honest with each other as well. So I'm not talking about like being an I don't know unconditional hype man or anything. No, like we also I mean we both for for our promo docs we both had moments where we told the other person yeah scratch it, and we we were very compassionate about it. Like there was never anything where we had to say oh, that is a really stupid thing to write. You should not write that. No, it was always, oh, I get it. Ugh, I would want to include that so much as well, but it um, it doesn't make sense. Strike it. You don't have space for it. Strike it. Like these kinds of things. And on the other side, but also we had so many moments where we said, you, you do realize that this point needs to be much more emphasized right <laughs> do you not understand how important that part of your work is <laughs> i'm i'm ready to tell you just let me know if you need me to tell you that, that kind of stuff that comes back i think to your point on i hesitate because i hate the word but the visibility and marketability stuff it was very two things one when you're doing a thing you have to have that be able to tell the story and understand for yourself why you're doing it. Be able to explain in 10 seconds to someone why they should care, why this is worthwhile. You have to kind of trust that. You don't really know how people see you. You don't know how people perceive you. You don't know always how well you've told that story. 
So it was really helpful because there are things that like we both work on that I you only hear like the blurb of it. And I have to like, hey, is this blurb getting across the point I'm yeah. trying to get across? This this very instant outside perspective. Hey, real quick, give me the outside perspective. And I mean, because we have established such a, a trusting um relationship we are very efficient in doing so right like yes. that because that is tricky stuff it's hard. like i could not give the same feedback as efficiently to anyone you need to have an, a relationship like that established so that you can trust that if i'm saying mm, no that burp doesn't cut it it's not like hurting you you're not like i don't know <laughs> making you cry for half a day because i mean let's be let's be honest we are talking about really tough stuff here. And yep. I, I mean, I, I think back to the interview we did a while back where I think I talked a little bit about how much people or is me personally, but I think a lot of us do that, define ourselves through our work. So can be really tough stuff we're talking about. Um, and I guess to maybe form like some kind of advice, out of all this, like get yourself a promotion, buddy. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right? do it. Like it is incredibly helpful. It, I find it funny too, because I'm not sure we ever talked about that in any public thing, maybe on, on the senior AMAs, um, but it lines up so well with how I look at leadership. And, and I say, I always say it is so much easier to lead together. Um, which can be a bit confusing. And I'm not arguing that there shouldn't ultimately be one person or role or whatever it is that makes the final decision. Um, but again, this quick second perspective thing comes in. Like if I have a trusted peer that I I can quickly just ping pong any idea, any decision I'm about to make with, um, that gives so much more confidence. Again, as I said, like I don't have to just convince myself. That can take so much longer and you end up with like 80% confidence in something after agonizing over it for an hour. You think, oh, okay, I'm, I'm, yes, I'm going to do it. As opposed to, hey, Brie, I'm thinking about this and that. What do you think? You say, yeah, that makes sense. Now I'm at 90% confidence because you had context and you would have told me if it was dumb, it might still be the wrong decision, right? Neither of us is perfect. You don't have all the content, all that. That's all true, but 90% is good enough. And it took me five minutes and zero agonizing. And I'm still the DRI for the decision. It's still my decision. Yes. Um, I would never get back to you and say, oh my God, this backfired. How could you have told me no, you told me your honest opinion and I know how to, where to put that on, on my map of decision-making basically. Yep. And, and that is the, the very same thing that made the promotion process so much easier for both of us, I think, even though it was still really hard. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. The one thing I will say to kind of, finish that point the advice point when you when you were like do that check there were times where i was saying i don't think so because and here's this problem with it that's unsolved and that lets you say oh okay here's how i can account for that problem and it gets you around to a yes and you've saved time because here's this unforeseen problem that you can now account for you now have like a better idea for it. I think a thing that I really appreciated was like the no, that's not a good idea and here's why to make my idea better. That's one of my favorite things about being able to give and receive like real constructive feedback. It is the most amazing gift. Yeah. That also reminds me of something a bit earlier in the process, which I, I would um, want to give people as concrete advice <laughs> for any promotion that you might be going for where you have to write the promotion document. 
Um, and again, that is transparent in the edit history of our docs, um, but not easily visible uh, because you have to know, you have to look for it basically. But we wrote parts of the initial drafts of our documents for each other, hmm. right? Because again, for me, but I think for most, sitting in front of this blank page and having to go from zero to anything, that is the hardest thing in the world. And it's you can get so stuck there. But for someone else, sign me up. Like I'm here to hype all of my colleagues up. And again, not unconditional, insincere BS. No, there is so much praise I can give for any of my colleagues. And it is so much easier for me to write about someone else than about myself. It would be interesting, maybe yeah, I will never find time for it, but it would be interesting to go back and look how much survived. I don't expect more than a couple of yeah. and is <laughs> kind of <laughs> survived from these drafts, but such an amazing like kickstart. Like, yeah, yeah, it really was. Cool. I love it. I think that is probably the end of what we have to say on this topic for right now. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think there is uh, countless more things to discuss, but I think kind of as I hoped, as the uh, person who did not come with an agenda, just with the knowledge that we would never run out of things to talk about on this topic, we kind of, I think, found a fairly okay way to to have this be like a bit of an here is how it went for us and here is a few pieces of advice we we can give you based on that uh, kind of structure so yeah cool thank you thank you and uh, anyone who is going for a promotion hit us up with follow-up questions anything that was unclear uh you will easily be able to hit either of us for another hour of talking topic with many many more points we like we you know whenever i thought about this call because months ago it was clear to both of us that at one point we would have this conversation this recording the one thing i always thought we would mention during that conversation was that one final weekend shortly before we had to hand it in where I think we both just worked both weekend days full time on the promotion document. And what must have been like my 10 p.m. or something, because time zones, I was just like slouched on, on the couch. We were hanging in the Zoom. It was, it was, it felt very, I don't know, Hollywood movie sequence about the process like. And I kind of liked that because it was so. Oh, it made it so human. It can, and uh, I'm bringing it up now because, you know, this meeting now, the promotions are done. We are still fairly busy, but we at least are not too busy to finally do the recording. We're both sitting here in our offices. I'm mm, professional. Like I could pretend that I have uh, a plan for my first month as staff or whatever. I don't. <laughs> I have no idea. Got some PTO coming up. And after that is when I will actually start feeling like I'm in staff. And I do want to highlight that humanity in all of it. And yeah, I don't know. because And why is that important to me? Because we all, I think, tend to glamorize and idolize others. Like, I mean, it's a whole thing with the the Instagram effect or whatever you want to call it, where you only you only see the the nice parts, blah blah blah. Um, and GitLab culture, I think, is pretty good with that, but we can always be better and always, like, yeah, no, <laughs> it, was a, it was a rough weekend, and I was there in 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 my. I don't know, sweatpants and like uh, we had moments where we wanted to give up, so to speak. Uh, 
it was it was a lot um, and so yeah that's why we tried to give some advice to make it easier love it thank you very much i will stop the recording